It's a blessing to welcome on maybe the hottest player in the entire country right now. He's pulling offers from all over the country. Currently a star ranked recruit. Brandon Moore, how are you doing, man? Doing good. How are you? Pretty good. Well, as I just said, I'm not sure there's a guy in the country that's more hot than you right now. Pulling offers pretty much every other day, if not every day right now. Take us through how you're feeling right now. Yeah, um, it, I've just been – it's been awesome. Uh, you know, just – bunch of opportunities uh, in front of me and I'm excited. I'm, you know, I'm going to keep working to get to, you know, the place I want to be at. So we go back about seven months ago, you're just getting Cal Davis and they're obviously a cool school. It's great to get those college offers, but past week or so your points go like KU, Nebraska, Missouri, all these big time programs. How have you adjusted this massive jump in just about half a year? Yeah. Um, you know, I, all, like I knew from the beginning that I had it in me, um, you know, I, I always, you know, this is my dream. I've worked for it. Um, you know, and I think that if you have something you work for and you keep working at it, you know, you know, you know, success is going to be something you want. And that's what I wanted is to be at this level. And I, I proved it and I worked hard this summer. I got a lot better. Um, you know, so I just, I, I, you know, it's a blessing so much because I know that uh, you know, a lot of people believed in me across the board with this situation and all these offers coming in. You know, offers are great, but at the same time, like, you know, I've always been just focused. So, yeah. You've had some movement. A lot of different things have happened the past year, but what would you say is the biggest reason? What's the biggest result because of this blowing up? Was it obviously playing basketball right now? Was it certain just working out? You had a whole bunch of months to work out and grind your craft. What really led to this breakout? Yeah, I would just say like, I, um, you know, I took advantage of, you know, being off uh, with, you know, COVID, you know, no school, uh, AU being, you know, just being kind of shut down a little here and there, um, you know, the season ending short or whatever, um, you know, stuff like that. And um, I, I just use it, you know, there's not a lot of times you just get to sit back, relax and, you know, work out and kind of, you know, work on your body, uh, you know, because during the off season, you know, you work on your body a little bit, but you don't work on it as much as you would want to and that's kind of off season so I used to start as an off season for because I knew that eventually it all opened up that was my way of looking at it but like you know and so I just took advantage of what I had and uh June 15 hit and I couldn't believe it I didn't like I just wasn't didn't hit my mind yet like that recruiting is like now and so then from then on it's just been crazy so that first offer though no matter whoever offers you I know it's a special day for any player what was that first offer like take us through your reaction and how it all went down <laughs> Yeah, so I had just a Zoom with uh, them, and uh, it was UC Davis, and I had Zoom, I believe it was July 1st, I remember, and I, um, he he didn't offer me on the Zoom, but he had called afterwards and offered me, and I, I couldn't believe, because it was my first offer, and like, mm -hmm. you know, that's not, that's a, that's a heck of a program, like, they're a good program down at UC, over at UC Davis, I mean, they're, they're building someone down there in that league, and um, so that, that was a blessing for me, and I knew someone who went there, so. Uh, that was just it was awesome for me and uh, I mean yeah it was just crazy I couldn't I couldn't believe it I was like I, I feel like I was on cloud nine <laughs> but uh, yeah it is an adjustment period because when you are a student I don't think a lot of fans realize what it all is like because you're dealing with the schoolwork that every high school kid does even mm -hmm. to the extent that you're also playing basketball working your craft like a lot of high schools out there right. but not a lot of them have to go through the phone calls multiple times a day how have you learned to balance your life yeah, it's definitely stressful, uh, to say the least. It, and it's not going to be an easy decision. Like, I haven't cut a list yet. I have, you know, we're still in that, you know, the stage where we're, we haven't really thought about it. I mean, we have, obviously, but not to yeah. like, the extent where we're cutting lists and whatnot. So it's it's still stressful, no doubt. I mean, any recruiting process is stressful for anyone because you're making a decision for your future for the next four years and where you're going to get a degree from, where you're going to get a job from. It just determines a lot in life. So, um, you know, and so I just think, uh, yeah, I've just been managing it pretty well. You know, it took a while, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I, yeah, like you said, I, mean, I get four or five phone calls a day, um, interviewers, I mean, rivals 24 seven, all that sorts of stuff. So, uh, especially recently it's been nuts, but like, I, I, I manage it pretty well. You know, anytime I have an open free period and someone says, you need to call me, I mean, I'll give them a call or whatever, you know, I just try to, you know, fill in as much as possible. Uh, sometimes I'll just, you know, let my dad and my coach handle it. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, can you just, can you like tell them, like, can you call them? Can you mm -hmm. like, sometimes I just do that. But like, personally, you know, I, I just feel like I've done a great job managing it. Um, it is definitely time consuming. It really is. But I mean, at the same time, you know, they, it shows how much they want me and how much, uh, I'm being, you know, appreciated for my game and what I've done so far. So. 
when we look at the long-term outlook, we know you still don't have to make a commitment or decision now for over a year until the time has to come. But right. when you're looking at this, so you're going to want to slow down. You're going to wait till maybe have a few, a little bit more break to part times before you just keep pulling them in. Or are you just going to eventually say, all right, I kind of like these schools. We're going to break it off. How do you plan to adjust to that when that time does come? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that, you know, every, every stage of recruiting has its ups and downs. Like me and like, there's a, there's a period where there's an offering stage right now. I'm in the offering stage. And there's times where like a couple months ago, like there was a month where like two, two months, I didn't like, they were like not calling me as much. It just season had just started. Like it was kind of slow, mm-hmm. but now um, I think that it's really picked up. And uh, so, yeah, I, I would say as soon as it probably dies down a little more, you know, we'll really start to d- dig deeper. I mean, I'm getting offers like, like you said daily, like to where it's like, <laughs> like I, I can't even like really process them just cause like, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I, I, it's just such a blessing. I can't even, I can't even like describe how, how great I feel right now, but like, um, but yeah, it's just been, it's just been crazy as of lately, but yeah, but definitely as soon as it dies down, we'll really start to, you know, focus. I mean, uh, we have so many schools calling that we just, we have to, you know, eventually at some point just, you know, like be like, all right, well, is this realistic or not? You know? So, uh, but yeah. So. Uh, next question obviously isn't who's your favorite school or anything like that, but out of all the teams you've been contacted from or even received an offer from so far, was there one that really shockingly surprised you that you just didn't see coming? I mean, I think most people could agree with me before I could even say it, but that was probably Kansas. Um, I mean, that was probably pretty shocking for me because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, they 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 went hot on me like, like the night before. They were like, oh, my gosh, like this kid is a shooter. Like, I think – the th- reason like a lot of people ask me why are you getting all these offers at once and I'm like and I really and I I, I know why because they because if you look at NCAA as a whole no one can shoot well like right now <laughs> everyone's shooting pretty badly like and I'm being considered one of the best shooters in the country at six eight and that's just super like everyone's like oh gosh okay well if he's six eight shooter I mean the rest is all okay like you know we're, we're good on the main we want him because he can shoot it the way he can and um so it's just been great um, you know, obviously that was, that was a big shock for me. That I was kind of, I mean, that that's big time. I mean, that was crazy, but like, it just, it's just been awesome so far. I mean, there's tons of schools. I mean, it's still like aside, you know, from the bigger ones that people may know more, but you know, it's just, it, at the end of the day, it just goes down to the right fit and right culture for me. So. That's what I want to get into because you have looked at yeah. these colleges, you're talking to these coaches. What are some of the priorities for you? What do you want to see in a program as a whole that you're really going to help you kind of make your decision eventually? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I'm really looking for the right fit uh, in the someone who could really develop me into um, hopefully an NBA player. You know, that's my goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think anyone who plays basketball, I hope that's their goal. But, uh, you know, just, you know, I think that that that's what I am looking for. And you know, I'm looking for the right culture, right fit. You know, we're not necessarily looking for the biggest logo. Um, you know, we're not we're not looking for. You know, we don't, you know, I mean, I, another thing, like you look at Kentucky and Duke these past years, I think people are really starting to realize that, like, you know, recruiting is kind of spread out more. It's not just, you know, everyone goes to that one big school. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, the talent is, you know, still really good. I mean, my class is really stacked, so we'll see how that turns out with my class. But uh, anyway, but just saying, like, you know, I just, yeah, I would just say culture, fit, you know, development. Those are the big three things we really like, uh, really want. Um, you know, we want the right people who will put me with the right situation, you know, um, you know, a winning culture. You know, I want to I want to win, you know, so. Uh, yep. Why don't you elaborate a little bit more on that? Not just looking at the big schools, because that's been a problem for ever. We see so many right. guys say it's Duke, it's Kentucky, it's Kansas, it's North Carolina, right. it's Kansas State. Right. That's huge. And yeah, it, obviously, when you get that offer, it's shocking. It's great. And it could even be the school right. you go to. Who knows? But it's ultimately saying, I want to find the best fit for me because anywhere you go in the country, we know you can go make the NBA if that's what God has in store for you. You just need to find the right fit. Right. But who taught you that? Yeah. Um, I just, you know, I, I just think, you know, there, there's a bunch of schools like that. And, uh, you know, there may be not, like you said, the Blue Bloods or the big power five schools, but there, you know, there are mid-majors that I really like. Um, and which is shocking to some people and people are like, well, why, why would you do that for that? I'm like, well, sometimes that for that is always the best for situation for you. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, there, I mean, there's been so many examples of that. I mean, uh, and it's just been, you know, I've been, you know, my family, uh, my coaches, um, you know, they, they understand the same thing, too. I come from a very strong uh, program at CPA that is very uh, culture based and everything's culture. I mean, 
um, you know, it's all about each other. Um, and it's not about yourself. Um, you know, I don't, I don't get, you know, uh, you know, I don't get, you know, tons of love for it. I mean, I don't, I don't need it. You know, I just come and work every day and do what everyone else does and just be the best team that I can be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's the best thing for me. And that's what I want to do in college. Um, and I want to win in college. I think the best, the best teams that have the best culture are the ones that win. And, uh, that's what we're really looking for. So. Couldn't agree more. I know, I know another big thing for guys is location. We know you're in Tennessee right now. Mm -hmm. You're also from California. So right. Getting offers from all over the country. But <laughs> is distance a problem for you? Would you mind? Would you like going back home? Would you like staying in Tennessee or somewhere near either one of those homes? It does, doesn't even have a factor in your recruitment. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think it does. Um, I don't I mean. I mean, we're so focused on the right fit that, I mean, if it's, if it's all the way in Washington, it's all the way in Florida, Maine, I mean, out in California, whatever, you know, Texas, whatever. I mean, all those, those states all over the edges, you know, but like, I mean, it doesn't really matter because I think at the end of the day, you know, if I'm trying to like be the place I want to be at and I'm just looking for the right fit for me and the best place that'll bring me to the next level. And I mean, obviously, you know, um, it would, maybe it would be nice to stay nice to my family, but I also have family all over. I mean, many people don't know. I have family in West Virginia. I have family in Missouri. I have family in California. I have family in Texas. I have family in, I mean, all over the place. So, um, so yeah, it's just, I mean, we're just, you know, I don't think it's a big thing. I've always wanted to, you know, I'm really well traveled being from California and moving to Tennessee. I've always played AAU traveling. I mean, I've always wanted to get out and experience college on my own. And the, the joke I have is like, well, why don't you want to go local? And I'm like, well, I don't want to do my own laundry. I want to learn to do my own laundry, but like, you know, I mean, obviously I know how to do it, but you know, just yeah. like stuff like that, just, uh, you know, just to go out and experience, you know, my own journey, my own path and uh, see what I can make of it, you know? So. This is jumping a little bit. We'll get right back in recruiting, but you obviously, like I said, you're from California and Tennessee. What right. that move? Why are you out in Tennessee now? <laughs> yeah. So it kind of goes down like back to the recruitment thing. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, but like, my family, it's it all, my, it all goes back to culture. I'm telling you, it does, because that's ultimately why my family left uh, California. Um, you know, we, we have family in California still, and it, it sucked leaving, um, you know, and leave my grandparents and my cousins, aunts, uncles, whatever. Um, and, you know, we made the move to Nashville because it was the best, it was the best thing for me and my family. Um, and they, they wanted to, you know, grow out and, uh, you know, experience, uh, you know, a different culture, live in the South, you know, uh, similar, similar belief system, you know, just, uh, just stuff like that. So, you know, it's just been, uh, it's been great. You know, I, it took me a while to like it, but I mean, I like it so far and, um, yeah, so it's, it's been good. And a lot of people have actually moved to Nashville mm -hmm. and there's, there's actually some really good players in Nashville right now. So yeah, it's been good. Yeah. We'll get that back in up in a second, but back to recruiting for a little bit. Another yeah. huge thing, maybe even the most important thing for players is the coaching staff and especially the head coach. I right. know a lot of guys have preferences. They some of them like one that's been coaching for a very long time, mm. accomplished. Some like the younger coaches. Some are based on religion. Is there a kind of preference yeah. then? And what would make up a dream coach if you could build one? Um, I would say one that um, you know I don't think there's any perfect coach. Mm -hmm. I think they all have their pros and cons to it. But I mean, um, you know, I think that someone who you know doesn't have to be the same religion, but if they have the similar uh, values that I do and similar mindset and, um, you know, someone who still believes in me, I want someone to believe in me. And, uh, I mean, of course, religion is a big part of our move, big part of a lot of things we do in our, uh, in my family and, uh, school wise. So that's obviously probably you could say that as well, but mm -hmm. just, you know, just what, what's the best place for me, um, and what coach can bring me to the next level. And, you know, not only just bring me to the next level as a player, but as a person, um, and, you know, bring the best out of me each, each and every day. Um, you know, I want a coach that's going to push me and, um, you know, so anyway, so that, it, well, I mean, I don't really know what to tell you there, but I, I say a bunch of different things, but, uh, but yeah, so yeah, I would probably say those things. So, yeah. Two other things, one of which is play style. That's obviously mm -hmm. a huge thing. What kind of right. play style would fit you best? What, what kind of play style are you looking for? Yeah. Um, I haven't really gone into that really thinking that wise. I think that, um, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, Brandon, you're going to come here. You'll play in this office. Brandon, you'll play in this office. Brandon, you'll do this or do that. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, like I haven't really did deep into that, but I think, you know, wherever I go, I think I'll be successful just because, um, like I said, three point shooting is such a key right now. Such a key. I mean, as long, I want to go somewhere that like they know how to use me, meaning as a play, like as a, 
you know, every coach is going to tell you that same thing, but like, um, you know, how are they going to, are they going to run me off screens? Are they going to, you know, let me live in the post a little bit, then pop out. And uh, you know, are they going to let me create off the dribble? Are they going to let me, uh, you know, you know, Phyllis say, you know, I could, cause I could do all those different things, but um, at the end of the day, I just think we're going down for the best fit and how they're going to use me. And we'll be really going to dig deep into that um, as soon as it gets down to really it. So. Also, another thing is looking at their track record, their history, and you kind of put it together a little bit about the coach there, but you look at all these programs, how much are you valuing if a coach can get a guy at your position, even some of those skills that a really good shooter, if they can make them strong college players and they translate to the NBA, how much of importance is that to you? That's pretty important. Um, you know, I think every coach has some ties to the NBA. Uh, every coach I've talked to at least has some significant ties uh, to the NBA at some point. Um, and so, you know, obviously, at the end of the day, that's everyone's goal. I mean, I, that's what everyone every, – I would say everyone in my class, that's, you know, everyone, you know, is getting recruited, that's everyone's goal is that, you know, I want to go to the NBA. I want to play in the NBA. I want to play for 10 years. I want to play 15 years. You know, I want to play for five years. I don't even know. Like, just, you know, just playing at the next level is a big deal for a lot of people. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's a big element of it. But, um, you know, like I said, most coaches, you know, have connections to it and they uh, – you know, and, and they think they can bring the best out of me. I mean, I think every coach has almost told, told me that. Um, they said, we can bring you to the next level. Um, and, yeah, but I believe it. I mean, so, uh, so yeah, we're really going to have to dig deep into this decision, so. Well, after talking to these coaches so far, who would you say have been sticking with you the longest? Who's been recruiting the hardest? Who's kind of the teams that are really in the heaviest mix for you right now? Yeah, uh, I mean <laughs> – as of lately, I mean, since the spree of offers, it's been kind of hard because I haven't actually been ready to process them. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I would say prior to, you know, this last two weeks, I would say uh, TCU, Ohio, uh, those two have been really hard on me. Uh, Rutgers, I mean, they, they recruit me hard. They're after me, you know, they're calling, texting me uh, weekly, calling the head coach weekly. I mean, they just, they want me and they, um, and they want to sustain their greatness. Obviously, TCU is doing pretty well this year. Rutgers is a top 25. Ohio should be top 25 at the end of the year. I mean, just crazy stuff. Ohio's going to win their league, by the way. But uh, just stuff like that, you know, just, um, you know, those those schools, you know, those are really my, you know, those are the beginning of the offers that I really started, you know, kind of get going. So they uh, they believed in me from the beginning and, the, you know, they wanted me. So, um, so those are probably some of the longer relationships that I've had for a while. So, yeah. Have there been any coaches that when you talk start talking to them, Maybe they kind of shock you how the character is. I know some guys say that they might think of a coach as being a lot more strict because of how they see them on TV. But when you talk yeah. to them, it's super funny. Has there been any surprising coaches for you that way yet? I would say Bill Self was like that. Bill Self had a great personality. I was kind of shocked by that. I mean, I didn't really watch his mannerisms on the court, but like uh, he was hilarious. I thought he was so funny. But uh, <laughs> just uh, I thought also, um, I'm trying to think. There was, there was a couple other ones that I was like, oh, like, okay I did not know that like um uh coach McCaffrey Iowa I was yeah. like man this dude's an awesome dude like he's a, he's a yeller on the court I can kind of see a little bit but I mean off the court I mean he's chill I mean I mean a lot of coaches are like that a lot of coaches are like that um and you wouldn't even know um and so it's just been um I mean it's hard because I haven't been able to really go to the games and really take visits and stuff so it's kind of hard to tell over the phone and on zooms but uh Hopefully, we'll see how April goes. That's what they're saying. So, yep. we'll see. So, how important will that be for you? Obviously, 2021, guys have tried holding out for a while. Now, pretty much all of them are committed because they know it's just not going to happen for their class. How yeah. big a priority is it for you to start taking this before you even start thinking about cutting it down and making a decision? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty important. But, I mean, I feel like school's done a great job of showing it. Um, and I already have, you know, there are schools I had ideas about, you know, prior and I've done my research on. Hopefully, uh, I hopefully, you know, I want to say, I don't know when I'll commit. I don't know when. I just hope I'll be able to get out. You know, that's like the best part of recruiting for everyone is like getting out and visiting, which sucks because, you know, players are just like, oh, man, I want to get out and go fit, take official visits, you know, because those are like the best part of recruiting. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's just been – it's been crazy for everyone. So, I mean, I don't know what, what they'll do, but I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, we've also, there are certain schools that we like during the summer, I had AU tournaments around their schools and uh, like Dallas, for example, I went to a couple of schools in Dallas and Fort Worth and 
um, and just visited them. So we were able to visit around like eight schools maybe. Um, so uh, we got to get be able to see different perspective. We got to see big schools, small schools, state schools, high schools, all sorts of different styles just to see what, even if I don't even go there, just to see the different, you know, levels of, because when, once you get to like a big, you know, 60, 60 plus thousand school, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Like, I had no idea. And then sometimes you go to a smaller school, you had no idea it was small and you show up and you're like, oh my gosh, it's tiny. Like, you know, so it's just, so we just got that idea in our, in our brains. So, yep. A huge thing for a lot of guys too is, especially now you being in another state that they're meeting all the mm-hmm. top guys, there's a lot of talent out there, is the potential of teaming up with them. And we, like I said, you, you mentioned it too, you're in a place that's got a lot of talent out there right now. It's one of the more loaded areas. Have mm-hmm. you talked to anyone out there or even back home from California that you could see yourself potentially <laughs> team up with? Yeah, um, I've actually been, I've actually, so it's a funny story. I actually know Sky Clark really well. Mm-hmm. Um, we know each other from out, out, out of our days in California. Um, believe it or not, I've actually never really told anyone this, but um, anyway, so we, we he, my dad had told him to move to Nashville. We were at a tournament and he was like, move to Nashville. And I was like, his dad said that reacting to it. And he was like, I was like man, you got, you guys move to Nashville now. He's like, yeah, how he said it. And anyway, they got a whole con- hour conversation about it. Mm-hmm. no joke he said three years later well it was about three or four years later they move out here and then he and then my dad's like you're, you're in Nashville now and they talk and he's like yeah he said once you told me that conversation he's like we researched it and we knew we were going there <laughs> so I take the credit for him coming out here just saying but uh anyway <laughs> um I mean obviously Brandon Miller um you know there's a bunch of people in Memphis that are great Knoxville uh it's pretty a loaded state I would say it's a loaded state and I would say I have great relationships with tons of people all over the country. You wouldn't believe, like, I know Isaac Trout really well. And then uh, a couple of dudes in Massachusetts, Florida. I mean, I know tons. I don't know what I'll do. Maybe some AAU teammates I'll team up with. I don't know. Sure. Uh, I've talked to, you know, I, I, I'm i pretty connected with those players, a bunch of players that are already committed and thinking about committing. So, I mean, we all talk. It's a small world. And we all know each other pretty well. We all play against each other. Mm-hmm. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if I teamed up with someone. Uh, but I don't know who it would be. Uh, at this point so <laughs> absolutely well, let's get into what's really been blowing you up the reason behind this all that's on the court you guys are now 11-3 you are having an incredible year 20 points a game over eight rebounds per game shooting nearly 40 percent from the three-point line take us through this year so far and how you like the season yeah it's been good um you know it's been fun uh you know it's just even a blessing to even play at this point I mean some people are not even playing I mean people are just starting now um and we're like halfway almost halfway it feels like but uh yeah and it just you know um you know I'm not really worried about my percentages um you know I just think you know different game present different opportunities and different things and sometimes it's hard um you know so uh just you know I would say what's crazy is um, I'm shooting, I think you said 40 or 38% from three. I think, I think I saw 38%. And I was talking to my dad and I was like, man, like 38%, like, that's pretty good. I was like, but I'm so much better than that. And he goes, yeah. He's like, he's like, you're also being double teamed. You're shooting from 30 feet. Like, like if you watch my games, like they, they like, I mean, I'm, I'm having to come off screens from like all the way, like volleyball line area. Like I'm shooting from volleyball line, they're shooting 38%. So that's like NBA level. So like, you put that into context, I'm actually like shooting 38% three from NBA range kind of. It's different when you think about that. But uh, mm-hmm. I mean, so it's not like I'm my toes behind the line or whatever. But uh, so it's just it's just been unique. Um, there, You know, obviously have blowing up. Teams are really starting to realize like, oh, we actually need to guard this dude. Like, OK, um, you know, I got base guard the other night for the whole game. I was like, that was really like, you know um you know that I was like man I this is getting real like oh my gosh this is gonna be every game now I guess so <laughs> but uh but yeah it's just it's been, it's been unique and I I actually love it you know so um but yeah one thing that's got to help you out a lot is you are a six foot eight and that is a hard thing for a lot of guys to guard with when you're right. talking to a guy that six foot eight especially at your age too to be able to step out knock down the three come off the dribble shooting three that's something that really just a very few players can very do in each class and just in the country in general. How have you been able to grow into your height while also working on that skill and almost playing near a guard kind of like game? Yeah. So this is actually kind of crazy, but in eighth grade, uh, seventh grade was the first time I ever shot a three in a game, seventh grade. <laughs> um, and some people are like, you're one of the best shooters in the country. You shot three at seventh grade. And I was like, yeah, I didn't start shooting threes from my hip at first grade or whatever. I mean, I, 
my dad would not let my dad was a strictly he's six six so he played he played basketball point loma so he was strict just post work uh old school type uh so he was like man you're not getting out there he saw the game develop me so he knew that if i had those skills in the post and in the, and, and you had great footwork and knew how to use my body and all that sorts of stuff then then all that shooting can come later because you can teach someone how to shoot i mean he already knew I had a good shot. So he was like, he was just waiting to develop it. And so he, over time, uh, it took a while. And so, you know, and we really, and once I moved to Nashville, I started training with uh, Tiger Campbell, um, who's at UCLA. And obviously if you watch him, you know, tonight, last few nights, I mean, he's just, he's on a different level right now. His passing, his dribbling, he's one of the best ball handlers uh, probably in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen a ton. And so I think, you know, being able to train around him and his family, it's just been awesome. And that's kind of how I give them the success on how I've, you know, been able to have that skill along with, you know, the post work and then the shooting touch I got uh, as a whole. So, um, so yeah, I think it's just over time, you know, we did it the right way. We didn't do it the wrong way. So I think that I give that, I give that, I don't, I don't take credit for that. That's on my, my uh, family and friends and stuff like that. So, yep. Having a dad's played basketball, you can kind of rely on him for recruiting information, tips about right. basketball. How big has that been for you? It's been amazing. I mean, he he didn't have the recruiting process like to the extent I did, um, yeah. but uh, he uh, I mean he had a couple of small doing offers. But the getting back to what we are talking about, you know, looking for the right school, he chose he had like Washington State, St. Mary's, you know, schools like that, and he chose to go to Point Loma, which was D two at the actually NAI at the time. He had D one schools because um, he was burnt out and he wanted uh, to go to a, a fun Christian school. He was just tired of. Um, you know, he had, I mean, he just pushed as a young age and he was, he got burnt out. And so he wanted to go to the right fit for him and ultimately it worked out for him in the end, clearly. And so, I mean, obviously he has, he's created friends for life because of it. So, I mean, it's just, it all goes into context when you look at it from that picture. I mean, it's not always just about the ball balancing. It's about the best, you know, how worthy your degree is, how much you can grow as a person. I mean, he wouldn't have grown as a person if he went to Washington state mm -hmm. versus if he went to Point Loma. Um, I think that, you know, just, as a whole, you know, he really, you know, developed and it was, it was just awesome for him. And uh, hearing his story with that, you know, it, it really makes it put into my in your perspective, like maybe the best, be, biggest logo isn't really the best, best fit. If, if it worked for him, maybe it could work for me. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, but uh, you know, he's just been awesome. Uh, I can rely on him anytime, you know, he's going to tell me the truth, straight up truth, nothing but the truth. <laughs> but uh even if it hurts, he'll tell it to me. And uh, he just wants me to get better each day. So Now, you didn't really get too much from AU season. I know there was some stuff you guys got camp-wise. There was something. That wasn't a typical one, though. But what do you plan on doing for that? Are you still planning on Team Thad for this upcoming season? And what's that kind of look like situation-wise? Yeah, so uh, we actually got to play a bunch. Uh, they, um, we had about five or six this summer. I grew uh, real close with the guys, uh, both from Arkansas and Memphis, you know. Uh, team Thad. I mean, obviously they just went UIBL. Um, well, obviously they don't have a season, so it would, would have meant, meant more if he, they were playing. But uh, just you know, uh, I'll be running with them this summer. Uh, we're real excited with them. They uh, they push me every day. Um, and you know, it, if if you know Coach Hurd and how he runs his program, you'll <laughs> you'll understand. <laughs> so we'll be excited for that. Real excited for that. So. This is gonna be going out there. Hopefully, you guys do get an EYBL. It goes back to what it once was. What do you want yeah. to go out there and prove and how are you going to be able to get out there and play in the YBL? Yeah, I'm real excited because I feel like, you know, it's my time to really prove myself. You know, it's, you know, it, you know, like I say, rankings don't matter, but at the end of the day, like, like it's just been hard for these dudes to rank people because they can't see everyone. And I, and I hear, and I hear in the back end of it. And so, you know, I'm really out there to prove everyone, you know, I want to prove that, that, you know, I am what I am, you know, I am worth my, what my offers are, whatever, you know, I just want to prove it. And I know I can. And so I'm not too worried about it. I'm excited. Um, you know, my team's excited. Uh, my family's excited. I mean, we're all just excited to hopefully get this thing rolling as soon as uh, it starts to open up more, but, uh, but yeah, so we'll see. Absolutely. Well, there's a few more things I was like wrapping up with one of which is discussing a legacy. I think all guys want to create that legacy for themselves. So when you step away from the game someday, what do you all do? <laughs> want to be remembered for what do you want your legacy to be for you to both on and off the court i want to be known as a winner and a great teammate um you know all of the success is a great thing but i mean at the end of the day it doesn't matter people are going to remember how great of a teammate you were how how coachable you were 
um, you know, how you treated the fans or whatever, you know, just stuff like that. I mean, that's why I mean, I want to be known as I want to be known as a great person, let alone as a basketball player. I mean, obviously stats and whatever are great, but stats can be broken. Relationships cannot be. So, um, and so I just, you know, I think that, and I also want to win, you know, I want to, uh, wherever I go, you know, I want to, I want to win a national championship. I think anyone wants that. Um, and really that, that, that's what I want. So, uh, yes, sir. Absolutely. And I know you're also a believer. Can I discuss your faith? How have you grown your relationship with God and what's kind of the biggest ways you've seen working your life so far? Yeah. I mean, I've seen him tons of different ways. Just, you know, I mean, he's, he's been awesome to me and, uh, you know, just been so blessed with him and, uh, he, um, he's given me so much. Um, and, you know, um, you know, it's not a day I don't thank him for it. You know, I think that, you know, God can give you everything. He can also take it all away in a second. So you gotta really be, you know, you gotta really be blessed and you gotta feel, um, and you, you gotta give the credit to him. Cause you know, without him, I have nothing there. I mean, there is, there's no, there's no buts or, and it, it is that. And so, um, you know, it's, it's just been, um, He's just, it's just been since, I mean, it's just been so awesome. Like, I can't even describe it. So, um, but yeah, I've just been, it's been, it's been awesome. <laughs> Crazy. So. My question I want to ask you is. You have a Bible verse in your bio. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Why is that there? And what does that mean to you? Yeah, I just think it means, you know, um, just be strong and immovable. I mean, mm -hmm. those first two words mean everything. I mean, God commands us to, you know, do tons of different things throughout the Bible and, um, that really just stuck out to me is, you know, being strong and movable because God has your back. I mean, it, you, you, you can't, you're, nothing's ever going to rock you. If you're never going to be scared of anything. You're never going to be fearful. You're never going to be, the only person you should fear is God. There's no other person you should fear because he's the one to give you everything, created everything for you. So uh, that's just kind of what I go off of. You know, it's kind of, there's deeper context to it. Um, and, you know, it's obviously not a known verse to everyone. So uh, that's why I like it. So <laughs> anyway. That's awesome, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on today, and I can't wait to see what God's got next for you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Of course, you're always welcome on. God bless, man. Yep. See you.